Hi, I'm Cynthia Khan, founder of Amuse Now, and I'm here today with indie orchestral rocker Mike Shirley Donnelly from the band Curious Quail. Hey, Hi. Mike. It's good to be here. Mike, congratulations on the success of your album After the Lights Fail. Thank you so much. It's uh, it's been a lot of fun. I listened to all the songs on the album, and the villain is my favorite. So of course I want you to tell me about that song and who's the villain. So there's kind of the, there's a little bit of backstory with that one. Uh, the the records that we've released and you know up up to after the lights failed have all been part of this ongoing story, and they are all connected. There's there's a bunch of different characters that sort of weave in and out. And villain is about someone who sort of accidentally is involved in a catastrophe that eradicates most of the life on the planet. And uh, the after the lights failed, you know, the album title is is all about how this series of events plays out. And the villain is about one of the people who's responsible. And he's also kind of in a position where he was against the decision it's it's kind of convoluted but it's the song is really about a lot of regret and being being blamed for something that you didn't want to happen but you had intimate knowledge of it anyway so he's in this really really weird position and is kind of losing his mind wow i had no idea and i love the fact that the album tells a story as well as being such interesting music yeah the um first record that we released we threw in some story elements to it and uh, the second one we kinda kept that going and the second one was was definitely a concept album like it, it tells a story from start to finish and it alludes to a lot of the things that happen in this and because we use a bunch of the same characters and a bunch of the same motifs the opening track of After the Lights Failed features the musical melodies and callbacks to the other records and the the melodies are sort of weaved throughout the entire record and so you know the villain contains pieces from previous albums just little kind of easter eggs for people that have listened to everything okay so you'll have to tell us the names of your first and second album so we can go out and check them out gotcha uh, the glow EP was released in 2009 and instant gratification was released in 2012 well, just so happens, I did listen to the song Instant Gratification and watch the video, and I love that song, too. Excellent. That's, that was a lot of fun, a lot of fun to put together. Um, it's, uh, the video that we've got out right now is uh, just live footage. Um, it was sort of crowdsourced, a bunch of people filming us at various shows, and we asked them, hey, can we, can we use this? And they said, yeah, absolutely. So um, there's... Uh, bunch of different sh uh, diff different shows, different festivals, uh, some stu studio footage. It was, it was a lot of fun. Because I was gonna, I was thinking about that when I watched both of those videos. The, the music is in sync with the video, which is in sync with the song, and it matches it perfectly. Who put that all together? Uh, that was me on both of those, actually. Villain, the video that we have for Villain on our YouTube right now is the live audio track as well. So that was actually a bunch of different video from one show with the actual audio track underneath. And the instant gratification video is the studio track with a bunch more. The, the thing, one of the things that we do uh, when we perform is part of, the, part of our sound involves this, th this thing called chiptune, which is uh, music created with video game hardware from years ago. We, we write some stuff on a, a Nintendo Game Boy and that sort of 8-bit sound is, is weaved into what we do. And so in order to perform with that live, we have to be synced in very like onto, onto a beat. And so when we look back at live footage, we know, hey, we're, we're actually playing that song at exactly 150 beats per minute, so we can sync that up with this as long as we've got the video. It's convenient. It's kind of like rehearsing with a drum track except live. Exactly. Well, to change the topic a little bit, on your Bandcamp album page, you cite a long list of thank yous so for a successful Kickstarter campaign. So you must have launched one and succeeded. Tell us your tips for success. Tips for success, man, it was a whirlwind. We thought, okay, 
we're going to do we're going to do a third record and we're going to try and crowdfund it we'll see what happens and we asked for about $6000 to help us cover the costs of recording and we kind of had a studio in mind and and you know the, these things were starting to sort of like add up okay if we if we get about 6000 we should be okay and then when we went live we hit 6000 within the first week and ended up camp capping the campaign at $10000 and we were kind of we were just blown away. So we were adding stretch goals, like okay, well let's add, let's do a music video, let's do a documentary. Both of which are uh, they're almost done actually. And uh, the uh, we we threw together a video for the campaign. You know, this is who we are. This is why we want to do this. And Kickstarter staff loved it so much that they put us on the staff picks. And so we were at the front page of the Kickstarter website for a good like two or three weeks. And that that totally mixed with the fact that we were kind of social media hounds. We were throwing it out everywhere, trying anything that sticks. Our guitarist aide came up with an idea. Okay, all right, week two, why don't we match every dollar donation for, with push-ups on camera? So we did that, and we did a lot of push-ups, and that hurt. Uh, but it, it totally paid off. And like I said, we, we ended the campaign with over $10,000 which was insane considering we thought doing the campaign at all was a risk that we weren't going to make it. That is so terrific and it's so cool that you were on the cover on the homepage of Kickstarter. It was pretty rad. We were very surprised by that. Well, for those who aren't familiar with your music, I think your voice sounds a lot like Snow Patrol, but your music is so different. It's rock meets symphony. How would you describe it? We uh, we call it orchestral rock, which I I'm not entirely sure that that does full justice to it. And you know, if you listen to the album from start to finish, there's so many kind of different genres and things happening that people who only hear one or two songs by us, they go, oh, okay, that's a hard rock band, or oh, okay, that's a folk band. We've been pegged as an indie folk band by so many different publications that have only heard like two of our songs because they heard acoustic guitar and violin. And they're like, oh, okay. And then, you know, we've got songs like Villain that are just, like, so in-your-face heavy rock that, like, it's it's funny. We, we sort of get pegged all over the place. But, like, we, we stick with orchestral rock because it's the most blanket term that makes the most sense, I would say. It's just hard because when I hear that term, I think of Queen, and you're totally, your sound isn't anything like that, although they're amazing. But I don't have a good term either. That's why I asked. Yeah, we just, we just kind of run with it see what happens. <laughs> From the way you talk, you must have quite an extensive music background, so please tell us about it. Extensive music background. Um, I started playing guitar when I was 13 years old. I had heard a Smashing Pumpkins song, and I was like, I want to learn how to play guitar because I want to do that. Um, and it kind of just started from there. I have no uh, formal training. I have no, I, I can't read music, and I don't uh, do, like, a notation or any of that. So I, I come up with ideas, and I uh, either write them onto a guitar uh, or a Game Boy and put them into a computer. And for the first uh, two years of the band, it was actually just me. I was performing solo, looping stuff, and then Joey, our, now he's, he's been our drummer ever since, he stepped up and he's like, yeah, you, you need a band, you need a drummer. And we sort of grew from there, and Alan, our violinist, is like top-notch, like world-class. So I can come up with sort of an idea, and he can chart it out, or he can explain it to, to the other members of the band. Or Everyone that I work with is actually way more musically talented than I am. I just write the stuff, and then they make it all sound beautiful. So it's, uh, it's been an interesting experience in that regard, because, like I said, I can't read music, yet I'm writing parts for violin, writing parts for French horn, and, and Joey brings in timpani to record. Like, the, the timpani in the opening track, the, there's, no, there's no samples. That's all, we recorded all of this because we're, I, I, because we're insane, I think is probably the way to, to describe it. I'm just surprised. You just must have such an innate talent. You're so blessed. <laughs> Thank you. I, I mean, like, people say that a lot to me. I listen to something, and I can usually figure out how to play it. But in other ways, that's held me back because I get sort of pigeonholed into certain writing styles. And uh, I, I don't know, I, I just like being able to hear something and go, okay, I can, 
I can figure out that melody, then I can probably figure out the roots from there, and then I can I can most likely play that song or do a terrible cover of it. You mentioned that you're social media hound, so tell us how do you use social media to connect with bands, promote your music, and raise lots of money? Uh, Twitter is the best. I hands down. People have been talking. I study a lot of social media marketing stuff, and more for me. Like I don't, I don't, I do it for the band. I don't do it in any sort of professional capacity. And everyone talks about how Facebook is dead, or Facebook is consistently reducing organic likes or organic reach, and how the people are looking for the next big thing, like Ello or whatever is going to come next. And for me, it's always been Twitter is the best way to interact with people because there's less of a barricade. You can tweet at anybody. They don't have to respond, but the channel of communication is there. And through just being, I, I sort of a weird term, but being good at Twitter is the best thing that a band can do. And close second would probably be Instagram because the visual elements, everyone says, you know, you see a picture, you're more likely to stop, right? Well, an entire social network dedicated to pictures. If you can, if you can do it and if you can connect with the right audience, find a good hashtag of something that you're passionate about. Like, you know, with us, we, we're video game nerds, hence the whole, you know, writing music with Game Boys. And through that, became connected with a bunch of different circles that are all video game music who we're, we, we don't really have, we don't belong there because we're rock band, but these groups have accepted us because you know, it, it was all just social media happenstance, for, for lack of a better term. So yeah, I uh, Twitter, absolutely Twitter. I agree. I have said many a time that Twitter has changed my life. <laughs> it has. It has definitely changed ours. Since Amuse Now is about artists helping artists, what piece of advice do you have for other indie and maybe unusual bands that are trying to make a name for themselves? Uh, the best thing you can possibly do is just be yourself. And that sounds sort of cliche and weird, but on the flip side, in 2008, I was sitting by myself with a computer and a guitar and a keyboard and a loop pedal and like, I want to mix guitar music with violin and video game sounds. And if, if I had thought I want to be commercially successful, I probably would have done something else. And because of that, I was really true to what I wanted to do. And I was so passionate about it that, like I said, uh, Joey, our drummer, was like, dude, I want to be in your band. And these other people, they sort of came to me because they're like, I like what you're doing because you're so into it. And I... I think that that level of just honesty and just drive it can it can do absolute wonders. If you're a new band up and coming, don't wait for somebody to tell you what to do. Do it. Just do it. It sounds like you understand the law of attraction. If you put it out there, then people who are like you will find you. <laughs> it seems to be working for us so far, yeah. So... What's up next for Mike, Shirley Donnelly, and Curious Quail? Uh, we've got a lot of fun stuff planned for 2015, but uh, the things that I can talk about at the moment, we are playing two relatively large festivals. Uh, 8-Bit LA hosts a yearly event called Frequency, which is down in Hollywood, and it's all uh, video game music and or music made with obsolete computer hardware. So again, we shouldn't fit in, but we do because we have this chipped in element. And so we're playing that in late January. And then we're playing an event hosted by MAGFest, which is a huge, huge video game uh, convention music festival over on the East Coast. And they have expanded to the West Coast, and they're having an event in San Jose called Rockage. And we've played previous incarnations of Rockage, and this year is going to be ginormous. So we're, we're really, really stoked about those two. And then we've also got some new music in the works and uh, a bunch of other stuff. But that's, that's the two big ones right now. Mike, I have had so much fun getting to know you today. Yeah, it's been great to meet you. Like, you know, it, it's fantastic to, to have a face, you know, to, to interact with. This, is, this has been great. 
I can't wait. If you ever get up to the Pacific Northwest, specifically Portland, Oregon, where I live, please let me know. And I wish you all the best. I'd love to see you live. We are definitely planning that, so I will keep you posted. Terrific. Have a great day. See you. Hi, I'm Cynthia Kahn, founder of Amuse Now. This featured artist presentation has been brought to you by Amuse Now Entertainment, a website that enables artists to profit from their creativity. To learn more about Amuse Now, visit us at www.amusednow.com or email me at ccon at amusenow.com.